This week, box fender flares. Box fender flares. And if you really squint at it, more box fender flares. Racers, welcome to Race Recon, your weekly rundown of motorsports, both real and virtual. I'm Kuro, your race engineer and mediocre driver. I'm here to give you this week's recon report. It's a new week and a beginning of the Update 6.0 cycle. Update 6.0 launched this Monday to some teething issues, but has brought some much needed change to Forza Motorsport. While some additions have been added to the livery system so that you can change the lighting in the paint booth to see how your car will look under different conditions, there appear to have been some issues that came along with that. Most notably, you're no longer able to finally adjust the location or the size of any livery. Uh, D-pads on game controllers on single clicks, which would normally give you a 0.5 adjustment during uh, the location adjustment and a 0.1 adjustment for size and rotation, depending on what you're adjusting at the time no longer are able to do that and seem to have an acceleration built into them where they erratically change numbers up and down. This has understandably annoyed quite a number of people in the community and they've made their voices heard underneath uh, Forza's post on Twitter. Along with the issues with the paint booth, there have been a number of optimization problems that have reared their head again. In the patch notes, there weren't many mentions of further optimizations that were to come in this update, but it's a shame to see that some people aren't able to actually play the game anymore. But what was mentioned in there was a change to the FRR system, which was supposed to uh, work on assigning blame to sideswipe accidents in racing, but it just seems to have cranked up the aggressiveness of the FRR to a whole nother level. I'll be here keeping an eye on the situation. I'll provide updates should something come out in a hot fix or something in the next week or so. But for my favorite part of Forza Motorsports, the community. Up first, we have Rivals and Time Attacks. We're on to week five of Blown Piston Motorsports Rivals Championship, and we're taking to Watkins Glen and the very, very fishtail happy Shelby Monaco King Cobra. Now, if you remember this from the Bertha of Ma open lobbies, this is probably the hardest of all the cars to drive. As with all of BPM's competitions, you are able to tune the car to set it up to your liking, but remember, these are very difficult cars to dial in properly. I would say try to keep it kind of compliant, let it roll into the corners, uh, but what am I saying? I still can't fucking drive this thing. And in wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, voting is now going on in the one hour of racing community to select their next championship. A tournament style bracket has been set up of all the various recommendations that have come from the community and we're getting down to the final selection. So if you're interested in participating and want to make your voice heard, go join the discord and go vote. Maybe we'll get to run what you like. And then coming up this weekend, IFE is moving on to round two of their Trans Am Championship at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Circuit. Round two will be dubbed the Mid-Ohio 100 as we complete 100 miles on the illustrious circuit. It's a tight, twisty one, so speeds will be down from last week's outing at Road America. But the 100 miler may prove to be quite the challenge, as the weather this weekend is looking pretty ropey in the area, and since the competition uses the real world weather to set the weather in the game, we're expecting to have a wet race with 1,000 plus horsepower Trans Am cars, 600 plus horsepower SGT cars, and absolutely no assist. So, hopefully, we can keep this as clean as possible. We'll be live at 7-ish in preparation for the event. Qualifying starts at 8.30 and the race should start around 9 o'clock. So come tune in and enjoy the view from the back. I haven't been super good at this one. I'm still nailing down exactly how to drive a car without any assist and the rain is not going to make it any easier. Uh, I was hoping to maybe be close in Delta to bring my wheel out this time. Uh, we'll see. I got to do some wet weather testing. And then one of the Giants has come back. Sora has announced that they're starting up competition again. They're going to be beginning off with their more casual competition, NAFCAR. Sora was one of the early canaries in the Forza coal mine when they, along with Racehaven, pulled out from conducting all competition in Forza Motorsport at the beginning of the year, stating they were looking for the implementation of some major changes to the management of community racing, and they seem to have seen the positive changes that they want to to be able to reinitiate operations. So, what is NAFCAR? NAFCAR is, as I said, one of Tor's more casual competitions. Racers for this competition will be split into two classes, underpowered and overweight. Racers will set up C-class cars to fit into one of these two categories and go head-to-head -head on the track. Optimization within the limits is allowed, but no serious parts are. For safety, all cars must include a race roll cage, but no race tires, 
and no adjustable arrow components. It's nice to see Tor getting back into the community racing game, and I can't wait to see when Racehaven decides to pull the trigger as well. And now to the IRL racing. And unfortunately, I didn't really get to watch any of it this weekend. I had a lot of circumstances and stuff that I was kind of wrapped up doing the entire weekend, so I only got to stream my races that I had. I didn't even get to watch any of the Indy race, let alone the F1 race on Saturday. But let's face it, we're all pretty certain that the Jetta race was going to be boring. I'm mostly just sad I didn't get to see the opening of the IndyCar season. And despite my best intentions, I keep forgetting to try to watch NASCAR. But if we're going to do it, let's go and start at the top. So at the pinnacle of motorsports, we have F1. And as expected, Max Verstappen wins again. The story of the weekend was Oliver Behrman stepping up from F2 to cover for Carlos Sainz, who was out with appendicitis, and putting in an astounding drive for the junior driver to come in ultimately seventh place. Science was taken out at the last minute after coming down sick right before FP3, giving Behrman just a single practice and qualifying to get acclimated with the new Ferrari. Behrman put in an impressive showing in qualifying to end up in P11, almost knocking Lewis Hamilton out of Q3. But when it was all said and done, he went out there and just put on an amazing clinic. There was some other shenanigans that happened with the Haas team, using Kevin Magnuson as a rolling shield to stop the field, getting around Hulkenberg while he took a pit stop. Other than that, it was kind of just a race. We'll continue the Max Verstappen podcast world tour in Australia in two weeks, so I guess see you there. Now that the obligatory F1 talk is done, we can get to the best open wheel racing in the world, IndyCar. IndyCar took to the streets and runways of St. Petersburg, Florida. The race around the airport was honestly not the best show for IndyCar. It was a pretty by the book run there wasn't a lot of chaos which is surprising for a street race with such narrow walls and a new setup there was intense on track battling even battling in the pit lane as cars were going too wide to make it to the pit exit lane in order to have track position on their re-entry the scuffle in the pits would see her to get ahead of rosenquist but just not enough rosenquist took a more optimal line to make it to the pit exit line before herda did they ended up inverting on the track none of that ended up mattering as joseph newgarden's tire and fuel management strategy ended up giving him the win this is impressive because last year, Joseph Newgarden said that street tracks were his weakness. So starting off this year with a dominant street track win could only spell disaster for the rest of the competition. This dominant showing from Joseph Newgarden puts another pin in Penske's cap as he makes his march towards motorsport perfection. This is just one race, so let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. There's a long season ahead of us, especially IndyCar season. The next race for IndyCar takes us to Thermal and a non-points paying round, but it's a million dollars to the team that does win. And then there was NASCAR. Uh, yeah, I just didn't have this one on my schedule. I even said the race was happening last week, and I just entirely blanked on actually watching it. But NASCAR was at the Phoenix Raceway. The Phoenix Raceway is notable because Phoenix is where they did their preseason aero testing. At the end of aero testing, there was some chest beating from Toyota saying that they, that they were really happy with where the car was and they were expecting to put in good time against the other next gens. And it looks like they were right, as Toyota just put down an absolutely dominating display against everyone else. Toyota in long run pace was clearly better than everyone else, able to navigate traffic better and, and maintain tire and fuel loads for a longer period of time. Before the race even started, Camry's clean swept the front row, and they ended up clean sweeping the podium as well. Both Ford and Chevy have brought new bodies this season and are going to take a little time to get enough information to get the setups dialed in just right. And Camry rerunning the same setup from last year is just going to be walking away with these early season victories. But this weekend in Phoenix, we would see Christopher Bell take that top step for Toyota. So we'll be keeping an eye out to see how Ford and Chevy can close the gap between the Toyotas that they got in their midst. And with the last weekend behind us, we can look forward to this coming weekend. And we have endurance racing again! We have IMSA heading to Sebring. Taking to the bumps of the nearly 80-year-old concrete pavers that make up the front straight of America's oldest permanent road racing facility at the Old Hendricks Army Airfield. The rough mixed surfaces are a true test for the endurance and skill of drivers. In GTP, will Penske be able to stay perfect, continuing their run on from Daytona and Qatar? We also have Lamborghini making their first outing with their hypercar GTP. Will the Orca Cup continue the clash between the CrowdStrike and Aero Motorsports that we saw at Daytona? And in GTD, will the field be able to survive the exacerbated reliability issues that we saw cropping up on the new cars? We'll have to tune in this Saturday to see how it all works out. Qualifying starts on Friday, and there's support series already running today and tomorrow, and on through the weekend before the race starts. Lock in for 12 hours and enjoy it for me because I'll be busy.
But one thing I do want to bring attention to, one of the best shows of racing you can watch on YouTube, the Mazda MX-5 Cup put on by Whalen Engineering, broadcast on YouTube. You can see some of the hardest wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, some of the best Forza moves you'll ever see. Uh, I think one of my favorite things is watching it live with YouTube chat. And when anyone just gives it an almighty send around the inside, you're just like, Forza move! <laughs> uh it's it's a guilty pleasure and then after a long saturday of sports car racing we have nascar at bristol america's glass great coliseum is always an impressive showing for the nascar drivers really putting their skills to the test on the tight banking that makes up that coliseum if you've never had the chance to go to any sort of short track racing it is an experience you are right on top of the cars the sound the heat the smell you can you can't escape it the drivers get to feel the presence of the crowd on top of them and this year, it's important to note that Bristol is back on pavement. Over the last few years, they've experimented with both dirt and the con and the standard concrete that makes up the stadium. The only support series going out there with them this time is the truck series, so I'll be rooting for Raja Karub to pull through, but Sunday's the day before my anniversary, so I'm not going to be watching racing. <laughs> <sighs> okay, that gets us through all the IRL racing news, and this list just seems to grow week after week. And I hope you like this stuff. If if necessary, I can split it off into a different video, so let me know your opinions on down below. I bring it here because I like hosting racing watch-alongs, so if there's a series or a race that comes on that catches my attention, I like to be able to bring the community together, and we're all in this because we like fast cars, right? So let's enjoy them together. I say that we probably won't be doing any of that in this community until maybe April-ish? Uh, my schedule's pretty much hell between February and March. Moving on! We're gonna get into the events that are going on in Forza this week. Before we get into our usual feature content, let's take a look at featured rivals for this week. Turn 10 decided to give us the Forza GT Rivals Challenge. Taking on the homologated GT cars, we'll finally get a good picture of how they stack up against each other in a, in a clean time trial. So pick your favorites and then go set a good time. I can't wait to pick through the data from this week's event. I forgot to put this in my docket and I'm honestly a little upset with myself, but we have the first new car pass car and it has boxed fender flares. Look, I, I know I may be in the minority. I really, really love that like chunky boxy 80 style and the Nissan Silvia super silhouette just gives it to me. So if you're on car pass, uh, I think we may be at the end of the payout for the first car pass. So this might be the last hurrah, but what a way to go. I'll hopefully be able to like post some impressions or something of the car at some point soon. We gotta see what class this one falls into. And getting into feature multiplayer, we start off the month with the BMW M3 spec. We're taking out the E30s again, and the little boxes, again, box fender flares. The first generation of the Bavarian homologation special represents what's become a class of the field. The E30 set aside the consumer sport compact as a hot car that people would aspirationally look out for. We'll be running the first generation of the Bavarian homologation special into another clash of skills. With limited setup options and low power to weight, it's gonna be pushing your abilities to the limit against other drivers on the field. And then there's the Spotlight series. This week's Spotlight car is the Alfa Romeo 4C. The half pint Ferrari kicks off our four cylinders of Fury series as well. The compact sports car is an absolute beauty though, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this midship turbo four competes against the rest of the four cylinder field. The car starts off in B class though, so we'll take a little bit of tuning to get it into the open multiplayer series that we'll talk about later down the line. But speaking of the open class multiplayer series, we're gonna start off with the D class this week. The stalwart MX-5 continues its overall D class dominance. The grassroots motorsports darling continues to benefit from the Colin Chapman philosophy of simplify and add likeness. Rounding out the rest of the class, we have the 1974 Toyota Corolla and the Acura Integra. As noted in previous weeks, these cars specialize in high speeds and in places where a little bit more power is needed. But if you're taking on any of the true temples of speed, a little dose of American muscle will never do you, serve you wrong. So for places like Spa and Le Mans, you can take either a Mustang Camaro or either of the Corolla or the Integra. And starting off the first of these new cylinder challenges Forza has laid out for us, we have the juiced up four bangers in A-Class. For this one, it's a little more difficult to set out the sort of data rich information I'd like to provide to you guys here. So we're gonna have we're gonna have to use a little bit of creativity and best judgment. 
what I decided to do was take the normal race recon method and see what cars currently match into the highest positions in these classes and then identify from there what cars match the criteria that are laid out for us by the challenge. For this week, what cars in A-Class that have top positions in the rankings are four-cylinder cars. And then from there, I did a few additional points of data gathering in order to see what are sort of the cars de jour at different tracks, particularly at the world's test track de jour, Barcelona, to give you a few more options. And mixing all that together, we get our list of competitors. Starting off with the recon reports, Moving down from the top of the order, the first car that we have that has a four-cylinder is the AE86, and then followed up by the BRZ13. Now, the problem with this is we don't know what trim these cars were set up in in order to set these times on rivals. So if an engine swap was used to make it this competitive, it may not be the best pick, but I'm going based off of raw information. There's a lot of stuff that has to be processed, and I don't necessarily have the time to go in and look at each build specifically to make sure it qualifies. Now with those exceptions laid out, uh, moving down the list, we have the BRZ13, the Nissan Silvia, and the 1994 MX-5. And while, while specifically the 1994 MX-5 was the best performing one in A-Class, any of the MX-5s that are available can be put into A-Class. And then looking at Barcelona's fastest, we see that the KTM Expo R and the, K the Porsche Cayman 718 are fun options that can be taken as well. If you're really feeling brave, the Caterham R500 is there too. In the catering you may not win the race, you'll be the happiest person smiling and going sideways. Also of note, many of the touring cars start off in A-Class, and the ones that are in S-Class are likely capable of being ballasted down to go into A-Class. So get creative, pick something you like, and have fun. Now that we've gotten through all of that, I just wanted to thank you all for coming by and enjoying this video with me. I hope you found the information helpful. I hope you're looking forward to catching some racing this weekend. As I've been pretty swamped yet again this week, and it's coming up on my seventh wedding anniversary, I probably won't be around that much for the next few days. So things are going to be a little bit light content wise. I'll, I'll probably only be live for my races coming up. With the one hour of racing LMP2 cup over and IFIA being later in the evening, that will probably be the one time you see me online. If you want to reach out to me i'm always available on discord you can reach out to me on twitter or leave a comment or a comment on a community page post when i make them i hope y'all subscribe so you can see me back here next week i'll see you on the track and remember race safe race smart we're out yeah.